Welcome to my YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we will talk about the most interesting foods eaten in medieval Europe. 1. Swan As regal and beautiful birds, swans were often eaten by the rich during the Middle Ages. One cooking method involved boiling the swan, mincing the entrails, internal organs, and mixing them with blood, ginger, and bread. Another method called for removing its skin and roasting it. 2. Humble Pie Back in the Middle Ages, nothing went to waste. Without refrigerators or freezers, it was imperative to make the most of what you had. That's why chefs made pies with the entrails of whatever animals were around, including squirrels, deer, and rabbits. The internal organs could include anything from the heart to the intestines. Needless to say, every humble pie doubled as a surprise. 3. Roasted Cat Ah yeah! According to a Middle Ages recipe called Roast Cat, as you wish to eat it, it's recommended to use a plump, chubby cat for this dish. The next step is to decapitate, skin, and bury the cat in that order. After 24 hours, you can dig up the cat and roast it. Yikes! 4. Hedgehog Believe it or not, hedgehogs weren't always kept as adorable little pets. In the Middle Ages, people ate them. Typically, a hedgehog would be stuffed with various herbs and then baked in a pastry. 5. Beaver's Tail Until 1533, most eating habits in England were influenced by the Catholic Church. This included abstaining from eating all animal products, meat, dairy, and eggs. On certain days of the year, fish was okay to eat. Interestingly, the beaver's tail was considered to be fish, so it was allowed on those meatless days. People saw beavers as fish because they could swim. Apparently, the tail even tasted like fish. Don't take our word for it, though. 6. Porpoise Porpoises, which are smaller than dolphins and have more rounded noses, were eaten as a delicacy during the Middle Ages. National Geographic shares that it was exquisite enough for royal feasts. Usually, porpoise meat was eaten in a soup made with almond milk, wheat, and saffron. 8. Lamprey The lamprey is a terrifying fish with a suction cup-like face. It uses its mouth to suck the blood from larger fish. And while it might look like something out of a nightmare, this fish was eaten as a delicacy during the Middle Ages. 9. Pig Chicken Since dinner usually doubled as entertainment, medieval chefs were always looking for ways to keep guests amused. This included a quirky creation called a pig chicken or cockentrice. To make a cockentrice, a chef would cut a boiled rooster in half and sew it on the bottom half of a pig. The entire thing was stuffed and roasted, then covered in egg yolks and saffron. 10. Singing Chicken On that note, chefs went to great lengths to turn their recipes into humorous presentations. According to one particular recipe, stuffing a roasted chicken's neck with mercury apparently makes it sing. Allegedly, during cooking, heat pushes out of the chicken's neck and makes a noise that's similar to singing. While it might have passed as a party trick, mercury is totally not safe to eat. 11. Whale Whale hunting is obviously frowned upon these days, but during the Middle Ages, the salted flesh of a whale was a typical recipe. Whale meat, which is extremely hard to digest, was usually eaten by lower orders. It was indeed worthy enough for the rich. 12. Whale vomit As for the rich folks, they were all about whale vomit. It's also known as ambergris and is a solid waxy material that's produced and released by sperm whales. Ambergris floats around in the sea for months or years before it's washed up to shore. Sometimes a boat might scoop it up, but because ambergris is so rare, only the extremely rich people of the 17th century enjoyed it. These days, ambergris and whale hunting is banned in most parts of the world. 13. Live frog pies. Aside from sewing up animals and serving singing chickens, medieval chefs often used live animals in their dishes. For example, it was common practice to add live frogs to a cooked pie. When the pie was sliced open, the frogs would hop out to the tune of guests' laughter. Well, at least people were easily amused, right? 14. Cock ale. During the Middle Ages, people didn't drink much water, they were all about ale which offered more calories than plain H2O. 
But as you can imagine, medieval folks came up with some pretty interesting ways to flavor their booze. Cock ale, for example, was made by adding a crushed boiled rooster to ale. 15. Unborn rabbits. This one is pretty terrible, you guys. According to Food in Medieval Times by Melita Weiss Adamson, unborn and newly born rabbits were also consumed during the medieval period. Rabbits weren't considered meat, so they were allowed on meatless days. They were often roasted, eaten in stews, or used in pies. 16. Hares and Hair Blood Sauce Also known as hares and talboats, hares and hair blood sauce is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, the blood from the hares was used as a broth. The blood broth was mixed with ground almonds, onions, vinegar, and spices. 17. Caudel Caudel is an alcoholic drink that's shockingly similar to eggnog. It consists of mixing raw eggs with wine or ale, which creates a froth. 18. Jelly of fish Jelly of fish or jail of fish is a fish dish with vinegar jelly sauce. First, the fish is blanched, cleaned, and then boiled in a pan with wine and vinegar. 19. Mock egg Since eggs weren't allowed on meatless days, chefs had to get creative with their recipes, so they made mock eggs, which called for empty eggshells filled with almond milk jelly. The center consisted of crunchy almonds dyed with saffron and ginger. 20. Milk and lard Milk and lard, also known as late lards, include a mixture of eggs, cow's milk, and lard. The mixture is then divided up into five separate bowls. Each bowl is dyed with a natural food source, such as parsley, green, turmeric, orange, and sandalwood, red. Boiled blood was for black and saffron was used for yellow. The custard mixtures were individually baked and layered on top of each other. Finally, the layers are pressed to remove excess moisture before it was sliced and fried. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. Before you go, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.